What are the root causes of the conflict in Ukraine today? Um, it's very simple. The people of Ukraine have decided by a substantial majority they want to pursue an open society, democracy, and market economy. And they would like a foreign policy which is oriented towards Europe. And you have a regime in the Kremlin which says that Ukraine does not have the right to make those decisions. And therefore, it, that regime in the Kremlin seized Crimea and launched a hybrid war in Ukraine's east. I agree. And uh, what would you say, what is the U.S. doing to help resolve the crisis in Ukraine today? And is the United States doing enough? Well, the United States has been fairly active. Um, and fairly active is not enough. The United States has claimed at the highest level that this is merely a European or regional crisis. And when you have a, one of the two world's great nuclear superpowers uh, marauding in Europe, seizing territory by force, this is a global crisis which requires the uh, direct attention of the United States. Uh, the United States has done some good things. It has been strong in helping to persuade Europe to levy sanctions and levying its own sanctions on, on the Kremlin. But it has been slow providing security support for Ukraine. Um, this is getting better. Uh, but the United States should be doing more. And it's been slow in recognizing that Mr. Putin's ambitions go beyond Ukraine and strengthening NATO. But here, too, the United States policy is, is changing for the better. And what would you advise President Obama to do, if you could speak to him today? Um, he should be, we should be supplying substantial military equipment to Ukraine, including some lethal defensive weapons. And we should be, provide, we should be um, guiding NATO to substantial deployments of equipment and troops to the east. Uh, we, we've begun to do that. Ash Carter has been in Europe this week. Um, he's talking about putting equipment for a, a battalion in Poland. I would say this is a, a good half step forward. We should be putting that equipment in the Baltic states, and we should be putting a battalion um, in Poland and maybe even in the Baltic states. Okay, great. And you're a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. You're an expert on this area. Right. What's your prognosis for the, how the situation in Ukraine will develop, both in terms of security and democratic development? Well, there's no doubt that the Ukrainian government is trying to um, implement serious reform. Um, it's also running into some problems. And I think the process of reform will continue in Ukraine, but slower than many of us would like. On the security side, I think Mr. Putin has a bigger problem than Mr. Poroshenko. Uh, his people, the Russian people, don't want him to send troops into Ukraine. So the troops he has fighting in Ukraine, um, he's trying to hide from his own public. Uh, he doesn't want to expand his presence in Ukraine too much because that will lead to additional sanctions and additional Russian casualties, which will have trouble explaining to his Russian people, to the Russian people, since he tells them there are no Russian troops fighting in Ukraine. Um, but he wants to destabilize the government of Kyiv. And so he does that by small, grinding offensive actions to take a little bit of territory here and there. Um, and he'll be able to do that for, for a bit of time. But if sanctions remain in place, if the United States does begin to send arms to Ukraine, so the casualties that he faces for his aggression go up, I think ultimately he'll face an unsatisfactory situation which will require a change in policy. Okay, great. And just uh, switching gears a little bit, how effective do you think Russian propaganda is in Germany and Europe as a whole? Well, the cruder elements of it, I mean, the bizarre stories that it tells regarding, for example, the shoot down of the Malaysian airliner uh, are not very effective. But it has helped to find the debate in ways that are helpful to, to the Kremlin. For example, uh, the war in Ukraine's east is not a civil war of Ukrainians against Ukrainians. It's a covert war, but though not so covert, run by the Kremlin, financed by the Kremlin, equipped by the Kremlin, and in many cases um, involving Kremlin soldiers, Russian soldiers. Uh, this is not something that the Western media states clearly. So that's, that's a victory for uh, Kremlin propaganda. And so how do you ensure that uh, citizens in a democratic society like Germany, like the United States, are not taken in by disinformation or propaganda? Well, it, it starts with the media. I mean, the media has to be, uh, have to be uh, honest and willing to accept the problems that comes, come with honest reporting. And I think the media has been lazy and in some cases um, cowardly, both, in, in, the West, both in, in Europe and in the United States. And is there a role for governments to play in countering? Well, point of fact, 
p part of the reasons why the journalists have not been as strong as they should be is because governments have not been as strong as they should be. Uh, there's plenty of data in um, the files of NATO countries, including the United States, which would prove the points that I've just made about this being a Russian-led, financed, supplied, and in many cases staffed war. Um, but they, governments have been reluctant to state that clearly and provide information like that to the public, because that would lead to questions about why the, the policy response has been as weak as it has been. So slowly, slowly, Washington and Western capitals are waking up to the danger of Mr. Putin's rev revisionist ideas. And as they do, the policy gets better. So, you know, I've been advocating a serious um, strengthening of NATO since late last summer. So we're only beginning to see that now this month as Ash Carter travels through Europe. I'll, I'll take it, but it's, it's slow and it's frustrating. And so are you hopeful at all for, for Ukraine? For I, th I think Ukraine will ultimately win because the Ukrainian people care more about defending their country from Kremlin aggression than the Russian people care about committing aggression in Ukraine. Because Russian people don't think they're committing aggression in Ukraine because they're, they're, their leader tells them there are no Russian troops there. So ultimately, Ukraine will win because the military has proved to be at least moderately efficient, moderately effective. Lots of, lots of Russian soldiers die in these operations, and that's hard for Mr. Putin to accept, to explain to his people. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you.